Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be looking at, unfortunately, some more practices that should be totally avoided when you are fabricating your own system. Now, what we're looking at here is a link to a video that I've actually been sent from a potential client who once again was asking me if this video represented uh, actual practices that are acceptable. Uh, he wanted to do a hookup, control his actual spindle, and he wanted to know if this was normal. He's never seen a video like this, and I have to agree with him. I haven't seen a video like this either, um, and that's what I'm looking at now. I'm getting more and more requests to do forensics on some of these videos that are being uploaded to YouTube, and I'm only really picking out the ones that I feel really, really need to be covered, and this is one of the most dangerous ones I've seen to date you'll see why as we go through this so once again before I get started I want to really really reiterate the fact I am not trying to beat down anybody who is really starting a YouTube channel and trying to get involved with electronics and documenting their journey I think that's great what I don't think is great is that you don't disclose that you may not be using best practice or safe practice in order to assemble your system you need to disclose that to others if you are uncertain if what you're doing is correct now there's no doubt in my mind that this end user knows this is not standard practice because if you look anywhere online you will never see uh, two leads using liquid electrical tape going inside a single terminal uh, on a, an actual breakout board and again these terminal blocks are designed for one lead you can see one lead here is inserted which is properly done there is nowhere anywhere online that reflects this being done so this tells me that there's a sign of carelessness. This end user wanted to get this done quickly so he could get his system up and running. He wanted to film a video quickly. Unfortunately, when we do that and we don't take responsibility for what we're posting, then essentially, especially when we're not disclosing that what we're doing may not be best practice, we then are disregarding recklessness in terms of what we're reflecting to other people as could potentially be incorrect practice for them to mimic and this happens all the time and that's why misinformation online leads to more misinformation and more misinformation and it's a domino effect so rather than go through everything here we're going to discuss the obvious of course we don't insert two leads into one actual terminal space on a terminal block that's obvious we certainly don't decorate our terminal block using liquid electrical tape that's incorrect as well we have no idea of the gauge of wire he's using here I do want to let him cover some things in his own words because it'll make more sense and I'll connect the dots as we go on and probably one of the first things you're asking is if these wires don't exactly look like these wires this is shielded security wire, which is the only wire that was available at Home Depot that uh, I could use for this application. Okay. He identified that this was security wire he secured from Home Depot because he feels that this is the only wire he could use for this application. Well, he's quarter right. Why I say that is, is that in best practice, double shielded cable should be used on any wire carrying a signal that's critical. And again, if we're using our breakout board to manip manipulate PWM signals so we can manipulate speed on our actual spindle, single shielded cable is only going to mitigate one frequency of EMI. If we use double shielded cable using mylar foil and timbrated copper, you're going to mitigate both frequencies. Therefore, we have more of a bulletproof solution. So. Again, uh, no one would shop at Home Depot for double shielded cable because, as I'm aware, do, uh, hop, or excuse me, Home Depot doesn't carry it. Um, that means that this end user, of course, would be down longer. He wanted to get the machine running. He probably wanted to get the video up, and therefore he went and did what he had to do. Of course, we identify here that there is no ground drain coming out of this end. We know that he's identified it as shielded cable. So therefore, we're going to make an assumption, once again an assumption, that the other end is properly terminated for the ground drain and then this way he can mitigate at least some frequencies of EMI. So what I'm going to do is just go forward Okay. now we're in the inverter section again he's using an HY inverter VFD uh, this is nothing new. He's actually trying to be very helpful, and I think in some ways he is, but it's kind of counterproductive because, again, we see here the shielding. This is mylar foil, and it is conductive. 
And I'll say it again, it's mylar foil, which is conductive. Most of you already realize that have worked on these VFDs that there is a terminal bus bar right here where all of these allocated terminals go. You can see they're numbered. Here's a ground BFW or UVW. Uh, these are your power outs to your spindle. Now this individual is filming this when he has a piece of shielding which is totally conductive in order to properly uh, dissipate EMI. And he's got it just basically outside of the PVC shield or PVC uh, casing of the cable. Now, in the event, God forbid, he, why he's filming this, he bumps this, or for whatever reason, because weird things happen in the shop, this makes any contact with any of these terminal outputs here, and something's frying, or something's catching fire, or someone's getting hurt. So again, this is what not is what literally is not to do. I mean, we look over here. And we can see an LED light, uh, re actually re reflection over here. So I know that this VFD is on. Okay, he's doing a tutorial so others can use this to connect their spindle connections properly to that Mach 3 Chinese breakout board, which I think is fantastic because that knowledge is really imperative to some. But the issue is, is that we're not taking into account all of the detail that we see here. And someone that has this kind of disregard for the shielding being that close to a powered out terminal block is absolutely frightening. I mean, I, I would have totally uh, trimmed this. I mean, this is just logical. You trim that off. You want no conductive, especially ground conductive material sticking out at all of a cable. Okay, and again, we see here this was just a rush job so we could get the video done. I get that, but this is dangerous as hell. But it gets worse, and I'm going to show you that. We come over here. This is probably the worst hookup for a spindle I've ever seen. I'm going to rewind this here just a little bit so you can he can explain it to you what he's doing. This is the spindle wires. I hooked this up with these bullet connectors. That way I can disconnect or reconnect the spindle cable whenever I need to. And these are very secure. They, they, they form a really tight fit inside of here. Okay. Once again, he's using bullet connectors on his spindle's power cable coming from the VFD to plug into these female ends of these bullet connectors. Now, anybody who's used these know that there are, they are pretty stiff as far as removal. However, these are completely false to use, I guess is the best way to say it. These are not best practice to use for this application because of the simple fact that as you see them dangling about here, if God forbid in the shop these were to come unplugged, for any reason and things weirdly happen in the shop it happens to me all the time i know it happens to many of you if there's a lapse of judgment one two three four of these leads come out you have a live lead okay and if we have a live lead and this makes conduction to this lead or to the metal chassis he's using he's now got an electrified chassis we are potentially starting a fire we are potentially getting electrocuted i mean we have to use common sense. And when I say common sense, we have to think safety first. Most guys that are messing with electricity have some knowledge of safety. This is a complete reckless disregard for safety because in the event that this unplugs, I do not see a happy ending in any, any source of the word. You're not going to have a minor damage thing. You're going to have arcing. Something is going to be destroyed because, again, the chassis is conductive. If the chassis is conductive and you running 110 volts through it in his case, you are definitely going to find low voltage problems across the board on most applications, whether it be through the motors, whether it be through the drives, um, all of that neat stuff. This is just explicitly dangerous. There's no other way to explain it. And it is, I, I consider it to be reckless because there's no way um, any actual manufacturer of a VFD or a spindle, knowing the brands he's using, which are HY, that they disclose using the proper connector. And what is the proper connector? Now, this is the kicker. This is the thing that I find really interesting. Um, but before we get there, look at the cable he's using again. You can see how thin this cable is. I don't know the gauge. I have no idea of the gauge of this. 
Okay, I'm hoping it's 16 gauge, which is the proper size gauge to use for this application. I'm, I hate to say it, I think he's using 18 gauge just due to the thickness. You can see here, quality cable, this is not to be used for this application. When it's this thin, most of the time, it is. it might just be due to the fact that he's using single shielded cable. I'm not certain. I'm just arbitrarily going by the pictures. But from what I'm looking at, this appears to be single shielded 18 gauge cable. And again, not suitable for any VFD or spindle dealing with what we're dealing with here, especially 2.2 kilowatts, which breaks down to 2,200 watts. Not, not applicable, not safe, and once again, we're borderline reckless. Um, moving forward, and this is what I find really interesting, he chose to use these integrated connectors for his end stops. And a matter of fact, here, I'll play this because I find this interesting. Okay. These four pin connectors or a two pin version for the end stops, four pin for all. Okay, why we use connectors like this that are similar for spindle connectors is very simple. When you use a connector like this and you have embedded conductors inside the connector, you have safety. In the event that this gets unplugged, these are not moving anywhere. So, worst case can happen is that it unplugs and it basically makes contact with your table, but being they're embedded conductors, you're not going to have conduction and you're not going to have the problems associated with this. This is a mess, and this is something we do not do. There is no way to properly insulate these from making contact with each other. If this individual, once again, does encounter a problem in his shop, he gets arcing, it starts a fire, he gets hurt, he goes to claim anything on his insurance because I have guys that will message me and say, you're really going overboard with the insurance thing. No, I'm not. Um, if you actually start a fire in your house or your shop or any other area that, uh, again, will be inspected if the fire gets out of hand, you will have a fire marshal come in and investigate exactly what caused the fire. If they review this cable and it's, it's deemed that the cable was actually the culprit of the fire, they're going to send that evidence right to your insurance company. And I can tell you right now, this is just terrifying. I mean, I'm, I can't emphasize it enough more for safety than anything else, but it is terrifying. I just cannot understand how he logically picked these for his end stops, which are much, much less critical application than his spindle. I don't understand it. And realistically, unplugging this end from this end is still just as easy. I mean, it's just as easy to do that to relocate in my eyes just like many of you were looking at this and saying the same thing, it's just as easy to re relocate the spindle using this connector as it is doing it the other way. I don't, I don't understand that logic. But again, now that you guys have seen this, and just so we're all on the same page, um, he does mean well explaining a tutorial on how to connect that breakout board to manipulate the speed on his HY spindle. But as we look here, just so we're all on the same page, it's a 110 volt spindle, He's running 2,200 watts, 2.2 kilowatts is 2,200 watts. And when we come over here, you can see what we're dealing with. This is serious power he's dealing with, okay? So I'm not being picky. Like I said, I've handpicked these videos to go over the ones that I feel the worst. This is one of the worst I've seen. And I truly feel that the end user, uh, or I should say the publisher of the video, was really trying to influence and do the right thing. The unfortunate side is he left out one of the most critical, critical um, actual declarations is that he may not be following best practice, and he's not. He's not. I mean, I'm telling you guys now, I'm telling you this stuff because I don't want to see anybody get hurt, and on top of that, things should be done correctly because what unfortunately happens so much more I'm seeing more and more is that as more guys get involved with this genre, robots are fun, robots are cool, you can make a lot of money with them. Um, but if we don't follow best practice, not only is most likely at some point in time he's going to have to correct all this work he's done, but that, of course, costs time and costs money. But we look at this, and what ends up happening is you get a, a false positive effect where, once again, it may be the components that he doesn't feel he has you know, total competency in, in in terms of stability, and really what it is, is it's not the components at all. It's the way that all the components are built to support integration into the breakout board with the spindle and with the VFD. 
you know, and that's the thing. You're buying general components. It's all of the connections, all of the cables, all of the variables that you're in control of that determine how stable your system is. And unfortunately, many guys just don't seem to have the knowledge to do that. And then they'll say, well, I connected everything right because I was able to turn my spindle on. That's great. Do you have two years stability out of that system manipulating spindle speed? If you can't answer that question, or even three months of stability, or even 10 hours of stability, whatever duration you want to actually equate that to, you really don't know if the system is stable. That's why him posting this video, if he doesn't disclose, hey, you know what, I've had my system stable now for six months, I'm doing all this work, and I just wanted to go over real quick exactly what I've done uh, to actually get the hookup of such and such component to such and such component, that would be a little different. This, I can tell you, is a video that was rushed. I feel that he wanted to get it up. He wanted to highlight you know, what he did to get to a certain level, but it's not really a great depiction of best practice, and it's certainly not a depiction of safety. So again, keep that in mind. Be fair with your components, as you would expect someone to be fair with your judgment of your knowledge of what you're working with, because in the end, your system, it's not the components that just make up the stability of the system, it's those variable components, the ones that you build, the ones that you go through and double check, did I do this right? Go through all the steps, make your checklist, did I do this, did I ground, did I, am I using the correct cable, am I in a rush, do I just want to get the system running, I don't care about using the right thing. If you don't ask yourself those questions and you have no right, I feel, to criticize any other component because we have to follow manuals. I find that there's a lack of reading when it comes to manuals. There's a lot of rushing to be done, and I, I just, just don't understand it. There's so much money at stake and so much time to correct this kind of problem. I don't see it, especially when it's done properly. And I work on these cables all the time, and I know if it takes me two, three, four hours to do whatever cables I'm doing, and I'm doing it every day, I, can't, I can only imagine how long it would take somebody who doesn't work on this every day. Okay, because remember, you, some of you out there are working general nine to fives and then working with this equipment on the side. I'm working on this equipment all the time, and the internet doesn't sleep. So remember, it's an old saying: it's five o'clock somewhere. It's very true with the internet. There's always someone online asking questions. So again, I hope the video has been helpful. I hope you guys have learned something, at least what not to do and why not to do it. Not just a beat down. I'm not trying to beat him down. I think he was really meant genuinely well. But I also feel that there's, like I said, it's a kind of a wash of trying to do the right thing where you're more or less showing the wrong. And we don't know who's interpreting that wrong thing. So, again, if you guys have questions, if you require quotes, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. Of course, you'll see that on the bottom of the screen. I wish everybody a happy and safe new year. I know this has been a crazy year. Um, I will be doing as many videos as possible. Of course, I'm trying to catch up in the shop. There's been a lot of, uh, lot of activity going on as far as builds, so I'm trying to just get as many things done as possible. Um, before you forward me any more videos, because I'm getting this a lot now, please go over them carefully. See if it really deems it, because a lot of my forensic videos I cover, a lot, of, uh, a lot of them fall within the same range. This was an extreme case, so it really delved into really going through a video. But again, if you guys do have to contact me, check the links out on the bottom. Get back with me. I'll get back with you as soon as possible. I love you guys. Take care.